Hello you guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm coming at you with a Final Cut Pro tutorial for beginners, okay? If you are brand new to Final Cut Pro, if you have never touched any of the color correction, color grading area within Final Cut, this is going to be an easy tutorial for you. I've been using Final Cut Pro for almost a year at this point, and honestly, I'm not an expert, but I have learned a couple of things along the way, and I just wanna show you guys exactly how I do some stuff, but I will say I'm in the middle of a thunderstorm right now, so if there's any random like big bangs where you hear thunder and Did you guys see that? We are going to make this work. And actually the example I'm going to give you guys is my video that I created with my management team. If you guys did not watch that video, we had three different cameras going and three different body styles. So this is a Canon M5. We were also shooting on my Canon M50, which is what I'm filming on right now. And then my management team had a camera themselves. So I think they have a Sony, but I'm not exactly sure. And each camera obviously picked up a different quality of visual and getting the visuals to match between all three so that when I jumped from shot to shot to shot, well, editing, I wanted it to flow really nicely and getting it to flow was very difficult, especially guys, if you guys watch the vlog channel, then you would know. Guys, I brought my stands for my lights, but I did not bring my actual light bulbs or the things that hold my light bulbs to the stands. So we were filming with natural lighting. I was in a different location. So my camera settings weren't exactly perfect for that location. And the color correction was a lot. But what I will say, most of the videos that I upload on my channel, I don't do any color correction. Like I will do very minimal stuff if I need to, which is like increasing the exposure or sometimes dropping the shadows because I want more of a contrast. But otherwise I have worked hard to figure out the right settings within my camera for this filming space. But since I was in a new space shooting with three different cameras, I feel like this is the best example I can give you guys on some changes you might wanna do to improve the visual within your YouTube videos using Final Cut Pro. So that's enough of an explanation. That was like way too long of an intro. Let's just go ahead and get into it. So just to show you guys what I was originally working with, this is the footage that came from my three cameras right here. So this is before any color correction. We have this, we jump to this. Okay, so these are pretty similar just because they're my two cameras. So I have the settings pretty close to the same within my two cameras. The one difference is over here. You guys can probably tell that this is a little bit more of a pink hue, especially because I was wearing a pink shirt. It really picked that up. And then this is their camera. So you can kind of tell from this to this, Theirs is a little bit hazy in my opinion. It doesn't have a lot of contrast and that was something that I had to correct. So this was the before and then this was the after of the quality of visual that I was able to get through the color correction. I'm going to click on this and I'm just gonna hover over it as well. So it's kind of stuck there. And then over here on the right hand side. So if you don't see this, it's because this is not selected. So click on this and then you're gonna get a toolbar over here. We're gonna click on these triangles and this is going to bring you to your color correction area. Now, I really only mess with two areas in terms of the coloring. And the first one is where it's going to initially bring you up, which is your color board. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mess with this shadows right here. So this is your shadows. This is your midtone. This is your highlights and this is your master. So if you wanted to change everything in terms of the exposure and you wanted to drop it down, you can do that right here. I honestly, I never do that, especially when it's the exposure, because I prefer to mess with the highlights, midtones and shadows because you can get more specific. So the first thing I'm going to do to make this deeper and more rich instead of hazy is actually drop the shadows right here and you can see just by pulling that down a little bit it makes this significantly more of a powerful image that's the first thing I'm gonna do I might actually also increase the exposure so same thing on all of these guys if you pull them up it's going to make it lighter if you pull it down it's going to make it darker or deeper and if we just revert back to what it's supposed to be or what it came as wow that's insane okay just that simple difference. That's all I did there. Now, another thing I think I wanted to do with this one because we wanted to match this. So jumping over there to over here. Okay, so I still need this deeper. That's way better. 
And you know what? Otherwise, I think this coloring is pretty good. The one thing I would do is because this visual right here is more warm toned and this one is cool toned, we're gonna change that. So if I go back up here, not within the color board section, I'm going to look at the color wheel section. And this is where you can really mess with color tone, okay? This is where you don't wanna go too crazy, especially if you are a beginner, you might just wanna stick to the color board section because you can change the saturation. So let's say I wanted to, I'm just gonna affect all of it and increase the saturation. Obviously that's really, really crazy and I wouldn't do that, but you can do that right here. So let's say you wanted mid-tones a little bit more saturation. I actually don't mind that. So maybe I'll leave it like that, but color board might be your starting place. And then when you wanna to move to more advanced stuff, color wheels. Now I'm gonna show you some beginner stuff within color wheels. If we scroll down a little bit, this temperature, this is probably the first area that you would wanna mess with. So if you pull to the left, it's going to make it cool toned. If you pull to the right, it's going to make it warm toned. So since I just wanna warm this up a tiny little bit, I just pulled it to the right a little, and from there to there, I think that's pretty good. So this is before and this is our after, okay? And that was only from making a few changes within the coloring, color correction side of things. Now, the next one I wanna mess with is this image of me because it is specifically more pink toned. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do this. You have to be careful with it because it can definitely go overboard. You just, little tweaks guys, little tweaks, but what we're gonna try to get to is this image over here, which is more warm toned and less pink. The first area that I'm going to mess with on this one we're gonna to go to exposure and I'm going to increase the exposure a little bit because I do want it brighter. I will mess with the mid-tones if I feel like, honestly, let me just show you. So this is pulling up the mid-tones. This is lowering the mid-tones. I'm gonna pull them up just a little bit, but I think that's better. And now the next thing I'm gonna to wanna to mess with is I'm gonna go over here and we are gonna to go to color wheels. I may end up dropping the saturation on this a little bit if the, I can't get like the pink out. But the first area that you can go is down here, the tint. If I pull to the left, it's gonna go green. If I pull to the right, it's gonna go pink. And if you guys have ever used Lightroom to edit your photos, this is very, very similar. So if you're used to like that kind of thing, this is, this is the exact same thing. So the first thing I could do is pull a little bit to my left to add green tones. And that's not, that's not bad, but it's kind of not my favorite. So I'm not gonna do that. What I'm going to mess with is up here. So these, are your color wheels, exactly why the section is called color wheels. And what you can do is you can figure out, okay, is it the highlights that are too pink toned? Is it the shadows that are too pink toned? What the heck is happening here? And you wanna pull it in kind of the opposite direction to offset that. So what I'm gonna start with is just the master and I am going to pull it a little bit this way, maybe up a little, we gotta see like how we like it. Down a little blue tones. Okay, I might do it like that. How does that look? It's still a little pink and I almost don't know if it's the highlights that are pink. I'm gonna pull it, I'm pulling it more towards the blue tones because I want it a little bit cooler while removing the pink. So that's not bad. The last thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to drop the temperature a little bit to make it cooler to match this. Okay, so this was the before on this clip and this is the after on this clip. And I didn't do too much, but when you're messing with those color wheels, guys, just do it little by little. And what you wanna do is you wanna specifically look at the white parts within your visual and try to get that to be a true white, especially their house. It was painted like a bright, crisp white. My house is a little bit more of a warm undertone. So when I'm editing, I try to match that warm undertone, but at their house, it was a pure, crisp white. So I try to match that within my editing and within my color correction. Honestly, guys, color correction within Final Cut Pro, it is pretty simple. And compared to using iMovie, because I used iMovie for several years before I switched to Final Cut Pro, within iMovie, you can't really do as much. You can't get as specific as, oh, I wanna affect just the coloring of the highlights because the walls are not the right tone. You know, you can't get that specific. So I really do enjoy Final Cut Pro for those features, but work within the settings of your camera. Try to do a couple different test shots. So mess 
mess with the picture quality and see what works better. Do you need it to be more cool tone? Do you need it to be more warm tone? Depending on where you're filming, that is going to change. But within this camera, I've got it set to a couple different settings that just work perfect for this space and then it saves me a lot of time with the color correction. The minimal stuff that I do is increase the highlights a little bit to bump up the exposure. I will decrease the shadows a little bit. If I need to, I'll mess with the temperature, sometimes the tint, but I try not to mess with the tint and I would rather work with the color wheels. But I'm hoping that you guys liked this video, that you learned something from it. I know it was very much so a basics color correction within Final Cut, but if you're just getting started and you don't wanna use LUTs and you don't wanna to get too advanced, these are some of the settings that I do to fix the coloring within my videos. So I'll see you guys back here on Tuesday with another one. Bye guys. Holy crap, and I was recording it. Did you guys see that? Whoa, Fancy just climbed under my desk. Holy sh... I never... I can't believe I got that on camera. <laughs> that was quite possibly in my backyard. Like that could have been the woods in my backyard. Oh my... It's okay. Oh, Fancy is freaking the heck out. That was insane. Like some of my lights, some of my lights just went off and then that, whoa, whoa. This is a weird filming day. Okay.